It's Budget Week, and here at Talk Radio TV, we're not exactly celebrating it, but we're trying to get to the bottom of how to live a better life, a healthier life, and a more responsible life. So the big question today for the political punch-up is this. Should we all be going vegan to save the planet? I'm Mike Graham, and this is the political punch-up. So welcome to both of you, Dale and Connor. Uh, you're here to make a very fast and swift case uh, for either going vegan to save the planet or not. Connor, I'm going to come to you first. You've got 30 seconds to make your case as to why going vegan isn't going to save the planet. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, first of all, a lot of the citations I'm sure my opponent will, will talk about is how dropping emissions gradually by phasing out meat production around the world is going to save the planet. Uh, as we can see through... British versus abroad meat production, um, it's actually possible to have lower emissions just by sourcing your meat from more ethically based or sustainable farmed practices. Um, but then they'll often pivot to the fact that, oh, well, animal suffering is, is just the qualification anyway. Well, that's a moral argument. And that's always an argument to imperialize your plate and take away consumer choice by the fact that they're devoted to uh, whatever the sun monster they think is going to come down and eat us all. I'd rather make personal uh, purchase choices, which means that I can purchase lower emission meat and you can stop telling me what to eat. Thank okay. Dale Vince, uh, vegans want to tell everybody else what to do. Why should we go vegan to save the planet? Yeah, I don't think the first part is correct. We're not telling people what to do. If you look at the facts, animal agriculture is one of the biggest drivers of the climate crisis, maybe second biggest globally. But more than that, Mike, it's eating up our planet. So 75% of our country is given over to farmland. And uh, we could save 75% of that if we stopped eating animals. That's half of our entire country given over to farming animals. We've taken it from wildlife. So eating animals doesn't just drive the climate crisis, it's driving the ecological crisis as well, the extinction of species, and of course it's bad for our health as well. And it's absolutely true that one man's meat is every man's poison. Well, that is uh, possibly a very good line. However, Connor, let me come back to you. The point about Britain being a very arable country, the reason why there are so many um, fields full of grazing potential for animals is because you can't do anything else with those fields, right? Definitely. I, I think as well, the idea that, oh, as suddenly we stop uh, meat production, that won't stop massive amounts of demands for what everyone has to eat. And to get the same amount of calories and particularly protein and fats and uh, branched chain amino acids and things like iron and that uh, to stop deficiencies, you'd need a mass amount of land for agriculture to then just go over to crop yields. And a lot of the studies, I think it was at the University of Arizona, looked at this and said, oh, soil aridness in the West, all of the crops that you're going to get, um, because of the way that all the nutrients have been depleted from the soil, a loaf of bread from the 1700s is far more nutritious than anything we've got now. So if you're going to replace all animal agriculture with, with plants and whatever other rabbit food you want to, you're going to want to eat, it's not going to be particularly healthy, especially for people like me who have got uh, specific food intolerances or people with autoimmune disorders or joint inflammation who rely on high meat diets to drive that down and, and don't want uh, sugar blood, blood sugar spikes and get all the sort of health impacts that would come from having a vegan diet. Dale, isn't that right? That If you want to take in as much protein as you would otherwise do from the meat that you would eat, you literally have to carry a sack of broad beans around with you everywhere you go. There is so much wrong in what has just been said. Like soil may be depleted, but on that soil we're growing feed to feed animals that never go outside. 85% of the animals raised in Britain never go outside. They never see a grass field. And we have to feed them supplements because they have such shit lives indoors. We have, most of the B12 that we produce, we feed to animals in order to feed to people to supplement because of their un unhealthy lifestyle. So it's a silly thing to say, it, it takes 10 times more land to feed a meat eater than a vegan. And our, our diet that people think is normal today is not normal. Our consumption of meat and dairy has grown rapidly in the last 50 years to where it is today. It's not a normal diet, it's just one that we've been able to have through the abundance of cheap fossil fuels. But isn't it the case, Dale, I'm going to come back to you for this question first of all, isn't it the case, though, that, that homo sapien men and women kind of evolved because they were meat eaters? They evolved uh, with the teeth that they have, uh, with the skills that they have, with their hands, uh, with their abilities to make weapons so that they could kill those animals. Isn't that all about what evolution is about? And you're basically asking people to go backwards and just eat stuff that grows out of the ground. No, I think that's wrong, Mike. Um, you know, I think if you look at our teeth, the, these aren't the teeth of uh, carnivore. They're very different. We're, we're omnivore for sure. We can, you know, we can we can do both. We can choose to do both. And that's the essential thing. We get to choose. If you look at the diets of most of the world, most of them don't eat animals because it's a very expensive thing to do. It's expensive for a reason, because you put 10 times more into a cow than you get back out in terms of protein, calories, you know, and the amount of land that's taken by animal agriculture 
uh, for the calories that it gives us in our diet is, is just crazy. It's a, it's a really uneconomic way to feed ourselves as well as destroying the planet. And, um, Connor, as far as you're concerned, I mean, you mentioned that you might have intolerances, you might have reasons why you can't not eat meat. There's no real medical evidence that says vegans are more healthy. I mean, I have to say, I mean, I've known vegetarians all my life and none of them look particularly healthy. Well, there's not particularly much evidence to say that total, uh, totalising veganism would do the planet much good anyway. If you look at the amount of water that avocados use, specifically the ones that are grown all by the cartels in Mexico, so there's all the social implications of that. Uh, quinoa, if you look at those weird little beads that are in every restaurant salad nowadays, they've become completely unaffordable for the people that actually grow them. Um, even mushrooms, for example, if you look at that when they're not grown in, in animal waste and, and uh, dung, then they take a massive amount of electricity to cultivate as a stock. So it's not that mass agriculture of, of non-animal produce is going to save the planet. Also, if you've got an issue with the amount of emissions that animal agriculture presently produces because of battery farms and, and livestock feed and things like that, sure, stop feeding them all the antibiotics, put them on seaweed diets that people have been using for, for cows to reduce their methane, and reduce the amount of battery farming. If you look at uh, rewilding strategies, for example, of incorporating uh, more biodiversity into farming practices, we can look down that route. But instead, that's not the conversation that's being had a lot of times by animal rights activists, the kind of people that were scaling uh, the government buildings yesterday, that was it, animal rebellion or some such other nonsense. They said, oh, we're making a moral case against uh, animal rights. We can't promise not to sit in the roads like insulate Britain do. I'm sorry, you're basically an eco-terrorist. You're trying to tell me what to eat. And if you're going to sit there and say, like Joanna Lumley does, oh, we should be rationing things to save the planet, that is not you advising me. That is you saying down the barrel of a gun, we're going to tell you what to eat, when to eat, and you better like it. Yeah, I mean, rationing really is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard coming out of Joanna Lumley's mouth. Final question to both of you, because we're going to hear a bell right now, uh, which is going to signify the time when I have to make a judgment as to which one of you has won the argument. Dale, give me your best reason to go vegan. Listen, everything that Connor just said is nonsense. 75% of our country is farmed. 85% of meat never goes outdoors because it can't go outdoors. We don't have enough outdoors to support the diet that we have. It's unnatural. It's killing the planet. It's killing us. And it's wiping out uh, animals as well. You know, the, the wild animals in our world. We've got about 10% of the world's biomass is wild animals now. The rest are farmed animals. Madness. So what's the best reason to go vegan? You haven't answered the question. Well, there's three, okay? Uh, give me three, one. Not, not, <laughs> but no, I'm going to give you three. Animal rights. It's not awful the way we treat animals. Human health, it kills us. And the climate, we're killing the climate as well. Three reasons, Mike. All it doesn't right. matter which one you choose. All right. Well, Connor, you give me your three reasons why you don't want to be a vegan. Well, I don't need three reasons because the mask just slipped there by the fact that he said animal rights. He started by making a case of saying, oh, it's all about the planet and uh, we've got to save the planet, and then turns around and says, oh, my problem is the way it's currently produced. So as soon as I offer alternatives to say, oh, we can innovate and make meat production much better, uh, he then pivots to, oh, we've got, to sacrifice, uh, we've got to sacrifice our diets to save the animals. I don't think animals have rights. We should not be cruel to them, but... Having a, playing a part in the dietary chain of nature is, does not make humanity uh, evil and it's not going to cause some sort of environmental apocalypse. Yeah. Well, listen, you've both made some great arguments and both of you are right in some ways, wrong in some other ways, but what both of you have not said at all is how good the food tastes. And I'm going to tell you this, right? I'm not a big steak eater, but whenever I do want a steak and I have a steak, it tastes great. And I don't think there's anything that any vegan can produce for me that's going to make it taste like a steak. So I'm going to say right now, Dale Vince, nothing personal, uh, I'm going to say that you've got zero point today, uh, but Connor has got one point, so he's the winner uh, of the argument today because you haven't quite done enough to convince me to give up eating meat and turn into uh, a bean merchant. But thank you both very much indeed for taking part. Uh, this is, of course, a political punch-up. We'll have more for you next week. Well, that was great, wasn't it? I really enjoyed that. If you did, there's lots more like it. Have a look over here.